Alright, good morning people. Uh, for today's episode what we're going to end up doing is uh, taking my clear ballistics gel and we're going to be remolding that stuff to make it solid again. And that way I can use it for uh, more ballistics testing. Now there's a lot of molds out there that you can buy off of the, uh, the open market for whatever you want to do. My block happens to be 16 inches long by uh, 6 inches by 6 inches squared. And the mold for that through uh, most of the company is going to be ranging about $55 to $65. What I'm going to be using today is a uh, ammo can, standard military issue, that I scored from a recycling center. Uh, they were going to smash it, trash it. I don't have the lid for it, so uh, I was going to use it as a target box and everything. But then I got to looking at it and realized, you know what? It's almost the exact same dimensions as my block. Let's tip this down so you can see. The uh, ammo can itself is 17 and a half inches long by five and a half inches wide, and it's plenty deep enough. It's nine and a half inches deep. So off of that right there, I'm actually going to get another inch of the uh, the ballistics gel. So uh, hopefully that'll stop with the blow throughs and all that good stuff because I do uh, get quite a few blow throughs with my condor on this uh, with anything except for you know like the uh, the hollow points and stuff that. I've got from John at Pella Garden. Um, just a, a regular slug, cuts right through it like butter. So, all you gotta do, the, uh, the directions are inside the, uh, the clear ballistics gel, and it says simply chop it into small pieces, cook it at about, I think it was 250 degrees Fahrenheit for three to four hours, and what that'll do is it'll melt all the ballistics gel down and uh, close up all the cavities and stuff like that and everything should work good as new. Now, uh, one thing you do have to do before you put it in here to make sure it releases is just get yourself some uh, some cooking spray. Mine happens to be butter flavored, that's all we got. So uh, the ballistics gel come out tasting like butter in case you wanna eat it, I don't know why you would. But this is a 10% uh, FBI ballistics gel. Gonna put the, uh, the non-stick inside here, hack it all up, throw it in the oven, and I'll uh, finish it up, let you know what the final product looks like and uh, any issues I ran into. So hopefully this helps out with anybody else that's looking for, you know, ideas. I was looking for old old signs, you know, street signs that have been knocked over and smashed. I was going to uh, bend them all up, you know, but this, this right here kind of saved the day. Nice and easy. Got handles on it. Scrubbed it out thoroughly. That way there's nothing inside there that, you know, old oil or whatever was used for. They could uh, possibly get inside my house, cook up a bunch of fumes or something. So without further ado, I'm going to get to hacking on this block, and then we'll get it all burnt up for you. So, stay tuned. All right, not sure how well this is going to turn out, but uh, I got one of the wound cavities out when I was uh, cutting up my block. And you can see just how much destruction is done when those pellets impact you know say uh, a little squirrel or something like that now this wound cavity from top to bottom you can see uh, basically like a ridge right there from top to bottom of this thing is an inch and a half and you can see it comes out almost three quarters of an inch from side to side so when that round goes in and say you're hitting uh, you know a smaller target or something like that um, no matter what kind of animal it might be from your pests and things when you're blowing a uh, an inch and a half by three quarters of an inch wound channel into that animal, you think of how much area inside there is getting destroyed, as well as the uh, the total depth. Now, the the biggest part of the wound channel itself is let's measure that out real quick. Bang! Is almost three inches. So you got an inch and a half by three quarters of an inch by three inches and then that doesn't include the initial penetration or after that that's just the main wound channel right there so you're doing a lot of damage to a small area with the uh, you know the slugs you shoot and again the ballistics gel is a perfect way to figure out exactly what's going on inside the uh, the target so continue chopping this thing up and uh, get the video finished up all right, same thing. Here's a second wound channel that I cut out of this ballistics gel, and it's where one of the rounds went in. It was a uh, 45 grain 1E. It actually flipped inside the target and stuff. So you can see how big that uh, round, how big of a hole it basically made inside the target, which is uh, 
sitting at half an inch to uh, two and a half inches top to bottom on the hole. The wound channel itself on the biggest part is from one and a quarter to uh, four and a quarter, so that's three inches. Three inches long, what do you say, inch and a half, two inches top to bottom, bang, bang, like that. And then when you cut these things open, here's the last one. You can see how big of a cavity that makes inside the, uh, the target. You know, it's just, again, when you sit there and think about, say, uh, a squirrel or something like that, its body is not that big, or like I use it for uh, coyotes, you know, that's really going to be doing a considerable amount of damage. Let me get this sliced apart. And actually, we'll do it this way so you can see how deep this cavity actually is. Take the top off of it. We're going to end up losing about a quarter of an inch of the cavity. But this will really show you how much it opens up the, uh, the insides of whatever your perspective target is. That right there, you know, again, that's going to basically bang, you know, destroy everything in its, uh, its path right there. And again, you know, you're looking at a raccoon. That's probably, uh, you know, the size of a lung right there that you just liquefied. Um, if it's a squirrel, you know, or something like that then uh, that round right there is going to actually destroy everything inside the squirrel's chest cavity. So, very interesting. Ballistics gel, whether you make it at home or you buy it or whatever, man, this stuff will really open your eyes as to what's going on with your, uh, your rounds and the impact on the target. So, stay tuned. I'll finish this up. Alrighty, so here we are with the, uh, the final step of the video on recooking the uh, ballistics gel and everything. <clears throat> and it actually worked out pretty good with the ammo can that I was using. Grab that thing again. So, all I did is took my ammo can. It was uh, actually 17 inches long instead of 16, but it was half an inch uh, narrower, so I lost half an inch on that. But I've got an extra inch for, uh, for penetration evaluations and stuff like that. Again, the non stick spray. It got into the corners a little bit and made it kind of mushy where that stuff melted down. And here is the final product. Still not too awful bad. You'll be able to see the uh, the penetration and things like that. That's a uh, the fillet knife that I used to uh, chop it all up and all that good stuff. And like I was saying, you can see right there where it just kind of got a little gooey on the corner. But I don't plan on shooting that spot anyway. I'm sure next time I cook it, it'll burn it off. So all in all, not a uh, not a bad product. A little bit of a pain to get it out of the uh, the can itself because what I didn't stop to think about was when it started to, to come out there was no way to uh, get any air behind it and it created a vacuum so it just stuck in there like glue basically so what I did is I took the uh, the trusty fillet knife went around the edges of it um, and then shot air with an air compressor in there in between the can and the uh, the, the ballistics gel itself and what that did is uh, by hitting it with 90 PSI of air, it forced the air in behind it, and then it started to slide right out. Once I got maybe a third of it done, then I could really get the air back behind it, slid right out of the box, and uh, everything's good to go. So it took, uh, man, to cook it and all that good stuff, it took me, I'd say probably about seven or eight hours. I didn't want to burn it, so I went real slow. Used uh, 200 degrees for, like I said, right about eight hours and it melted it down there's no air bubbles in it or anything like that all the air bubbles floated to the surface on the other side but what you do see besides the dog hair and uh pellet remnants and things like that that sank to the bottom is there are some uh like cobwebby i guess is what you could uh call it we got a really really clear surface there this i don't know why it's not quite as clear on some spots as it is others but uh, you can see the little hair-like stuff in there as well. It's almost like a, uh, like a spider webs in there. But, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what it is. Alrighty. <clears throat> I also got rid of the, uh, the plastic wrap that it was in. Because that cellophane was just uh, ripped up real, real easy. So I'm using, um, it's a baking sheet thing my wife had in the kitchen. I wanted to use wax paper, but we didn't have any. But uh, this is basically the same thing on the inside, wax paper and then tin foil on the other side. And it should work fairly well. 
biggest thing is just keep this stuff clean and there's all the air bubbles they're all right there on the very surface they all went you know to the top so it's not going to affect anything at all when it comes to the actual uh, function of it but that's it 16 inches of uh, actually 17 inches now make sure it actually came out to uh, about 17 and a quarter from end to end. So 17 and a quarter now. It is about five and three quarters tall. And so it's five and a half by five and three quarters by 17 and a quarter long. So that's actually a pretty good size. It'll be uh, just about perfect so that I can test out all the pellets and things like that. Next run that I'm gonna uh, do is, now that I got my ballistics gel all cooked up, I'm gonna take some uh, 19 grain terminators and uh, run them through four different guns. I'm gonna run it through the, uh, the 2250 because that's gonna be the lowest velocity. I'm gonna run it through my uh, uh, RWS 350, speed it up a little bit, and then we're gonna run it through the, uh, the Talon, and then we're gonna run it through my Condor. That way we can see exactly what speed does the exact same pellet. So the control is going to be the, uh, the same pellet. Again, it's going to be the, uh, the H&N Terminator. Those things are just nasty when it comes to uh, dealing with rats and stuff. But we're going to run it through this stuff. Four different guns, four different velocities, so that you can see exactly what happens to the exact same round four different ways. See what, uh, basically I want to see uh, like what Mythbusters did, where they ran the, uh, the rounds to see how deep they would go into a pool and the higher velocity, the less penetration they actually had against water. This will penetrate a little bit more, but we'll also see if we can get that pellet to really open up a little bit more. But uh, that's all for the next one. Hopefully this helps you guys. If you're looking at a uh, ballistics gel, you know, ways to uh, melt it, mold it, you know, things like that. I was uh, about to spend 55 bucks on a mold, looked out in my garage, had that ammo can sitting there, jackpot, freebie. I love free things. So until next time, have a good one, ladies and gentlemen, and stay tuned.